before I start my homily, I would like to point out as we are approaching to tomorrow's evil, so-called Halloween, I'd like to encourage you to increase your prayers. When the world attacks us with, with its own evil and agenda, we have the weapon to fight, which is the prayer. Don't forget that we live in this world, but we are not of this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, we hear the parable that is well known to all of us. The parable of the sower and the seed. There are multitude of theological messages in it, and two aspects that I would like to point out. The first is the sower who went out and did not care where he would sow the seeds. He had so many that he wanted the entire earth to receive the seeds. The seeds we know is for the seed, singular, is the word of God. The sower is God. God is not stingy. He is not the one who discriminates people, allowing just for this person or that person for the potential of salvation. He shares the word of God, the gospel, with all people, despite what condition their hearts may be. The word of God is made available to everyone. He is the God whom we worship, the God who loves us abundantly and hopes that the seed will bear fruit. He even hopes to bear fruit for those who fall under rocks, thorns, and dry soil. The first reality we learn from this parable is how generous the sower is. The second aspect of the soil is the people. The gospel reveals that some seeds fell on the road, on thorns, surrounded by stones on the earth and on good soil. Christ does not tell us whether the soil is the way that, that it is meant to be. If we combine the heresy of predestination with Christianity, like Calvinists, then we will turn around and say, this person is like the stone, that person over there is like the thorns, while looking at ourselves we say, my heart is good and I'm ready to receive the word of God. The truth is that as Christians, we cannot bear fruit alone. Our hearts are never cultivated and never ready to receive the gospel if we neglect our neighbor and care only for ourselves. The sower, the Lord, gives the seeds to the opportunity as he does to every one of us, not to selective individuals. Brothers and sisters, every living thing on earth and everything material shall perish. How much time do we spend on nourishing the soul? Where is the seed that God has planted in us? It is okay to be weak and to struggle. But it is not okay if we remain in such state of being. It is not good if we are depressed, full of anxiety and fear, instead of working on bearing a fruit. Mankind is created to commune, to not only grow in holiness, but to become holy. The struggle is natural on his path. Man is created with a capacity for communion with God, and his infinite being and grace. The anthropological thirst for the infinite predisposes the fallen yet unlimited man to the lifelong search for satisfaction. Most often, passions and chemicals offer the opportunity to attempt to quench the infinite thirst with a momentary pleasure that leaves the person even more empty in the end. Overcoming the passions, depression, and anxiety requires one to not stop being an addict 
but to become addicted to God alone. This attachment is the seed that we need to cultivate and grow. Another way to, another way to understand the meaning of this parable of the sower and the seed is our faith. How seriously are we taking our faith? We need to water the plant of our faith. We cannot just come to church, sit down with crossed legs as if we are in our living room, when the most important part of the divine liturgy takes place, the consecration of the gifts, sit down or go either to the bathroom or outside. Do not forget that a new spiritual world opens up, a window into heaven. From the time the liturgy begins with blessed is the kingdom, the angels are present with us during the liturgy. I wish I could emphasize this more and enough. We have the seat of faith and we must live accordingly. Let me tell you a story that happened recently, a real story. During the cherubim hymn, the, during the divine liturgy, a priest was praying and returned to the altar. In the altar, from his, I believe, left side, he saw an eight foot tall angel standing there, imagining the altar on the side. Not only that, the angel was staring at the priest for 10 to 20 seconds, and then he put his head down, not looking at him. The priest was frightened, and then the angel dissipated into the midst. The priest's hands were shaking, and he did not know what to do, or what, what that meant. He regained his composure and continued the service. He was serving, so he didn't want people to see him, his reaction. After the consecration of the gifts, when the time came for communion for the clergy in the altar, the body of Christ, which is divided into four pieces, the lamb, the part of this Jesus, which goes to the chalice, was missing. The same one which is placed into the chalice itself was gone. It is believed that the angel was there to take it and give it to someone who needed it. The divine liturgy, it's not a joke. There's a reason why you have you heard me so many times emphasizing how important it is to read the prayers before communion at home and after communion here or at home. The seed is planted in us and we must water it, otherwise it will die. Dear parishioners, let us have the example of the saints of how to be Christians and love God. They're given to us to bring us closer to Christ. Their icons, the frescoes, all of them that you see around are not just pictures on the wall, but examples of men and women who have come before us, living their lives in Jesus Christ, a, a process that it is necessary for our faith. They were not perfect. They got angry. They fought. They, some of them even cursed God. However, they turned their lives around and chose to become Christian, the true faith of Jesus Christ. Our fellow brothers and sisters out there in the world who are outside of the church also call themselves Christians. They strive for, but they lack what has been given to us, and many of us reject this gift that is given to us, and we're taking it for granted. Do we not know that the scriptures state that much is required of whom much is given? We take these salvific gifts for granted. We must have faith and come to a realization that we are not alone. Do not forget that God is on the throne. Do not fear. Without struggles, there's no salvation. Keep your hearts pure and as we pray, in our morning prayers, guide down my will and teach me to pray, to believe, to hope, to suffer, to forgive, and to love. Love God with all of your heart. Therefore, love your neighbor. Open your heart to the Mother of God and tell her your sorrows. Remember that if we do not water the seed of our faith, it will die. Nourish your soul so that it can grow and give fruit. Pray unceasingly and keep the fast. Let us be angelic, angelic in appearance, 
and furthermore angelic in mind, may we all find a paradise. Amen. Amen.